Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In a previous video, we have studied the general block diagram of super heterodyne receiver. Today, uh, we will discuss each and every block in that super heterodyne receiver. So, here, a radio receiver will always have an RF section. So, it may or may not have an RF amplifier. So, that's why here, the RF section is tunable circuit uh, connected to the incoming antenna terminals and its job is to select the wanted frequency and reject the unwanted frequencies. So in the domestic uh, type radio receivers, uh, the RF amplifier is uh, generally not used uh, for economic reasons. Uh, however, the RF amplifier improves the receiver performance. Okay, so there are certain advantages of RF amplifier. The first advantage is that uh, it is having greater gain uh, that's why it's having better sensitivity. Second advantage is that it is having better image frequency rejection. Third, uh, signal to noise ratio is improved. And uh, after that, uh, here the better adjacent signal rejection, uh, that means better selectivity is also there. And last, coupling between the antenna and receiver is improved. Okay, so these are some advantages of RF amplifier. Then uh, after that, uh, there is one block that is mixer or we can say frequency changer. Okay. So this mixer is basically a non-linear resistance uh, which has two inputs at different frequencies Fs and Fo and here its output has several frequency components including the difference between the two input frequencies so that uh, the difference frequencies that is Fo minus Fs is called as intermediate frequency and it is selected for amplification by the tuned circuit at the output of the mixer okay so this is the figure of mixer or we can say frequency changer here there are two inputs the first is fs which is coming from the antenna or rf amplifier and second is fo uh, this is from the local oscillator and it produces four outputs that is First is the Fs that is signal frequency, then next is Fo that is oscillator frequency, then third is Fo minus Fs that is a difference frequency and last Fo plus Fs that is sum of frequencies. Okay, So here the mixers can be of two types. Uh, the first type is separately excited mixer or we can say self excited mixers and uh, the diode mixers are separately excited mixers and whereas if we consider the mixer uh, using transistor then it will be considered as a separately excited mixer okay and FET or MOSFET are self excited so in self excited mixer the same device acts as oscillator as well as mixer also okay so here uh, it will be recalled that uh, the coefficient of the non-linearity of most non-linear resistance is low so due to that the inter uh, intermediate frequency output of the mixer is very low and we have to increase the mixer output at IF that is at intermediate frequency so the oscillator voltage is made very large so here 1 volt RMS or more that means uh, it is said that the local oscillator varies uh, with the bias on the mixer from 0 to its cutoff so thus uh, varying the transconductance in a non-linear manner. So that here the mixer amplifies the signal with this very fine GM uh, that is nothing but transconductance and IF output results. Okay. Then after that next point is tracking. So first of all let us see what is mean by tracking. So the receiver has a number of tunable circuit such as antenna or mixer or a local oscillator tuned circuits. Okay, so here all these circuits must be tuned correctly if any station is to be tuned. Jo bhi aapke output yahan pe rahenge, that is in terms of mixer or local oscillator or antenna. Ye aapka signal receiver tak uh, lene ke liye aapko yahan pe help karenge. Aur yahan pe jo bhi aapka frequency hoga, wo aapka ek hi station pe tune honne ki bohut hi yahan pe zarurat hoti hai. Thik hai? So for this reason, the capacitors in the various tuned circuits are gang. That means they are mechanically coupled to each other. Okay, so here due to this arrangement, it is possible to use only one tuning control 
to vary the tuning capacitor simultaneously it just because of gain capacitor okay so the local oscillator frequency which is nothing but fo this is fo local oscillator frequency must be precisely adjusted to the value which is above the signal frequency that is fs fs is nothing but signal frequency okay so here if you want to calculate the intermediate frequency then it is given by this fo minus of fs so if this tuning is not done precisely then the frequency difference that is fo minus fs is not correct so this type of error is known as a tracking error because here the tracking is a process in which the local oscillator frequency follows or tracks the signal frequency to have the correct frequency difference so due to that tracking error what happened here the station will appear away from that uh, correct position on the frequency dial of that receiver and uh, practically it is not possible to always keep a constant difference between that fo and fs so hence some tracking error is also present so the tracking can be of two type the first is two point tracking and second is three point tracking okay so let us see first point that is two point tracking in a two point uh, tracking there are two methods the first is pattern tracking and second is trimmer tracking so let us see first method that is pattern tracking and error in pattern tracking okay this is pattern tracking so here let us see what happened so here a small variable capacitor that is cp this is cp which is called as pattern capacitor which is connected in series with the oscillator coil this is oscillator coil losc okay and this cp is connected in series with that losc that is oscillator coil so here in that figure we can see due to the series connection of this cp and cosc the effective capacitance is generated okay and here the cp and cosc will generate the effective capacitance and its value is always less than that c oscillator alone that means what this will increase the oscillator frequency making the tracking error positive so here we can see this tracking error is positive and the pattern capacitor is adjusted to have zero tracking error on two extreme points on the frequency dial okay so here in case of pattern tracking here the positive error will be generated like this on positive half side and the cp that is nothing but pattern capacitor is connected in series with the oscillator coil that is losc okay second is trimmer tracking trimmer tracking and error in trimmer tracking so here a small variable capacitor which is considered as a ctr that is a trimmer capacitor which is connected in parallel with the main capacitor this is cosc this is main capacitor and which is connected to the trimmer capacitor and here due to the parallel connection of this ctr and cosc the effective capacitance will always be greater than that cosc okay so this decrease the oscillator frequency and making that tracking error negative so we can see here this is the negative tracking error and uh, this trimmer is adjusted to get zero error at two points on the frequency dial okay so if we see here the pattern tracking in that the tracking error is positive and in trimmer tracking the error is negative then after that in pattern tracking we have to connect that cp in series with the cosc and in second case for trimmer tracking here the ctr that is trimmer capacitor will connected parallel to that cosc okay so here next next type of tracking is three point tracking so this will combines the pattern and trimmer tracking that means it is the combination of both pattern as well as the trimmer tracking method so here the three frequencies of correct tracking that is at which zero tracking error exist are normally 600 kilohertz then 1500 kilohertz and the geometric mean of the two is directly 950 kilohertz 
so here we have to use three point these are three points first second and third point so that's why the name three point tracking is there and here it is possible to keep the tracking error below the three kilohertz frequency okay so here we can see this is antenna tuned circuit and this is local oscillator tuned circuit here the cp is nothing but padder capacitor and ctr is the trimmer capacitor so here in a three point tracking we will see that the cp is in series with that cosc and ctr is in parallel with that cosc that is c oscillator capacitor okay. next point is am detector circuits so the process of detection is called as demodulation and demodulation is exactly the opposite process of modulation so the original modulating signal is recovered back from the am signal by the process of detection okay so the first type is simple diode detector so in that case a diode is used for am demodulation or we can say for detection purpose and the circuit diagram of a simple diode detector is as shown in this figure and the input output waveform is also shown in this slide okay so here let us see first how it will work here the output of this if amplifier is am wave only thing is the frequency is if that is intermediate frequency instead of the original carrier so however there is no change in the envelope of the am wave this is the envelope of the am wave so in every positive half cycle of the input the detector diode is forward biased and it will charge the filter capacitor c connected across the load resistance this is c filter capacitor which is connected across this load and r is to almost the peak value of the input voltage okay so as soon as the capacitor charges to the peak value then the diode stops conducting so that means the capacitor will discharge through r through that resistance r between the positive peaks as shown in this figure okay so this is the our, this dotted line will shows the original output that is am envelope and this will shows that the capacitor will increase the capacitor will charge and discharge like this here the capacitor will charge then after that again it will discharge then charging then discharging again so thus we can recover here the original modulating signal with the some ripple included so these are some ripples which are included in that waveform so the rc time constant must be slow enough to keep the rf ripple is as small as possible so but it should be fast enough so that the detector circuit can follow the faster modulation variation okay so in that detector output process uh, there are two types of distortions which can occur in the detector output the first is diagonal clipping and second is negative peak clipping this is negative peak clipping okay so in this uh, diagonal clipping the type of distortion occurs when the rc time constant of the load circuit is too long that means what the rc this is the rc time constant and if the value of this rc time constant is very long then due to this the rc circuit cannot follow the fast changes in the modulating envelope okay so that's why the diagonal clipping is occur so we can see here the output without diagonal clipping is like this but due to that diagonal clipping the actual output showing the diagonal clipping like this dark line okay second is the negative peak clipping so this type of distortion occurs uh, due to the fact that if the modulation index on the output side of the detector is high than the its input side means what it is dependent on the modulation index parameter so this is the input signal am signal at the input of the detector and this is af signal at the output of the detector so at higher depth of modulation of the transmitted signal the over modulation that means more than 100% modulation 
may be takes place at the output of the detector and uh, due to that over modulation the negative peak clipping will takes place as a result of this over modulation okay so here the negative peak clipping is occur due to the over modulation index and this diagonal clipping will occur due to the charging and discharging of this capacitor okay then next is the practical diode detector so the circuit diagram for this practical diode detector is as shown in this figure this is practical diode detector so here as the direction of the diode has been reversed the negative envelope will be demodulated okay so this is our detector diode and here due to that negative agc that is automatic gain control this voltage will be developed at r1 and r2 will provide the series dc path that means here the r1 and c1 is the low pass filter which is used to remove the rf ripple that is still present in the detector output okay so this rc filter is used to remove the ripple factor and the capacitor c2 is nothing but ca uh, coupling capacitor which prevents the diode dc output from reaching the volume control of this r4 this is to the rf amplifier so the r3 c3 combination this is r3 and c3 combination will forms a low pass filter which is designed to remove af component that is audio frequency component and this will help to produce the agc voltage this is the output that is agc voltage which is the pure dc voltage so the amplitude of this voltage is proportional to this carrier strength okay so here we have to select the rc time constant of the filter for this detector why we have to select here rc time constant because we have to use here different rc filters so the selection of rc time constant for the filter of am detector should be done very carefully the rc time constant should be small enough to follow the fast amplitude changes taking place in the envelope so this is essential to avoid the diagonal clipping and at the same time rc time constant should be large enough to reduce the radio frequency ripple so that the rc time constant should be large the choice of this filter capacitor is totally dependent entirely on those conflicting requirements okay so this is all about the practical diode detector so this is all about our today session i hope you will like and enjoy अगर आपके कुछ डाउट या सजेशंस होते हैं तो आप हमें नीचे कमेंट बॉक्स में लिख सकते हैं सो वी विल स्टॉप हियर विथ मोटिवेशनल कोट टूडेज मोटिवेशनल कोट फॉर यू इज डोंट लिमिट योर चैलेंजेस चैलेंज योर लिमिट्स थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग माय वीडियोस प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल थैंक यू सो मच